Hi, my name is Matt White. Today I'm going to be telling you why you shouldn't be using shared secrets in your CI/CD. So when you first started using Terraform, you might have been running it locally. You would be logged in with Azure using, C using AZCLI, and everything just worked, and you could run Terraform plan, Terraform apply, no problem. When you get more mature and you move things into source code repos and remote backends and CICD, you need a way of authenticating those CICD runners into Azure. Now, the way that I used to do this, and a lot of people still do, is by using a service principle. Typically, a service principle with a client ID and a client, and a client secret. But obviously, that's really bad, because to, unless you use a product like HashiCorp Vault, it's likely that at some point, a developer, an engineer is going to need access to that secret in order to put it into the configuration of a repo or something like that. So if you trust those developers, that's fine. But sooner or later, that secret's going to get out. If that secret's got out, then you've essentially lost control of the identity. Another option was to use private key, certificate-based authentication. This is fine, this works, but it is quite complicated and you end up needing lots of other resources like Key Vault and other stuff. And basically private key management is hard. So there's gotta be an easier way, right? Luckily, there is an easier way. So Azure supports authentication using something called OpenID Connect into various different CICD providers. So today I'm gonna to be talking about GitHub Actions, but it also works with Azure DevOps, um, GitLab, Terraform Cloud, and I'm sure many others. So how do we use this stuff? And how do we uh, stop using shared secrets? What we're able to do is configure a trust relationship between your CICD provider and Azure. And essentially what that does is associate the tokens produced by the CICD provider with a specific identity. Now we can use one of two types of identity and one I like and one I don't like. Let's start with the one I don't like. So application registrations or service principles, uh, you can use these, you probably use these already, but they have a property to them called federated credentials. And in there, you can configure the federation between your CICD provider and uh, the identity. The trouble is that in order to create an application registration or a service principle, you need to have permissions in the enter directory. Now that's something you might not have. And this, this isn't helped because the enter permissions model is not flexible. You can either be an application administrator where you are able to administer all of the applications registered in the directory. That is overly permissive and probably quite difficult to justify. Or you can be something called an application developer, which allows you to create application registrations, but not delete them. So it's far from ideal uh, managing the lifecycle of these things. Luckily, there's another resource that we can use, and that is called a user assigned managed identity. Now, UMIs are probably my new favorite resource in Azure. They're absolutely fantastic. They can either be assigned to VMs or other resources in order to give them permission to do stuff, or they can be configured using federated credentials. It's exactly the same as using a service principle. Even the GUI in the portal looks identical. And the nice thing is about UMIs is that they're an ARM resource. And because they're an ARM resource, you've probably got permissions to create these things already. So let's go and have a look in the portal and see what this looks like. So here we are in the portal. We can see that in this subscription, I've got a couple of resource groups that are of interest. The first is the identity resource group. So let's have a look in there. We've got a user assigned managed identity. Incidentally, these are super easy to create. All you need is a name and a location. That is it. So yeah, here we are. You can see this one's called UAI GitHub OIDC. Importantly, it's got a client ID, which you might be familiar with if you've ever used service principles, client IDs, exactly the same. We've also got the object ID, which is uh, how you assign it role assignments in the directory. Talking of role assignments, this has got some already. It is an owner of this subscription because I am lazy. It is also a, uh, has a data plane role called storage blob data contributor to this storage account. Now this storage account just so happens to contain the Terraform state and is what we use for our backend. So federated credentials, what is this? This is amazing. This is what is what this is. Let's have a look here. Federated credential scenario, GitHub Actions deploying Azure resources. This is really easy. So GitHub organization, 
da, da, da. repository that is called Azure OIDC. We'll have a look at the repo in a minute. And then you have to select the entity. So this can be an environment with a given name. This can be a branch with a given name, a tag with a given name, or pull request. Now, pull requests don't have to have a given name because it's for any workflow uh, triggered from a pull request. So I'm going to use environment in this case, and I'm going to call it pod. Now, you can see some grayed out fields here. And this is important because what we're doing here is telling Azure to trust tokens generated by this issuer. And we're going to accept tokens with this subject identifier. And only if the token has this subject identifier is it going to be associated correctly with this identity. Now, you need to give it a name. But I just call it GitHub env uh, prod, right? Doesn't really matter what you call it. It's just the name of the object in ARM. Uh, the subject as well, that you don't touch that, you just leave it. And that's it. That's all I have to do from Azure side to configure OIDC. It's stupidly easy. Now, let's go and have a look at the repo and find out what's going on there. So this is it. We can see in settings that we have an environment. The environment is called prod. It's got some variables. You can see that it's got client ID, client secret, uh, client not client secret, that's the whole point of this, client ID, subscription ID, and tenant ID. Now, I've set these up as environment variables because I don't think they're particularly secret, but you can choose. If we have a look at the code in the repo, um, in fact, I'm going to switch to Visual Studio Code for this. What we're going to do is look at the main.tf. Now, this is just an example. I've got a couple of resources in here, resource group test using Azure RM and a resource as AZ API with a resource group test. Now, you might remember those environment variables that we had in our repo. Now, luckily, those work not only for the Azure RM provider, they also work for the AZ, AZ API provider, and they also work for the Terraform backend. So we can configure all three to use the same identity with the same set of environment variables. Very, very easy. If we look at terraform.tf, you can see that I've just got some required providers in there. Uh, the back end is set to Azure RM, that's important. Uh, and the provider Azure RM block in there is pretty standard. Now I've got a backend.hcl file, and I'm going to use this when I run Terraform init. You can see that it's got the name of the container, it's got the storage account name, it's got the storage account key, that's the file name that it effectively uses, the resource group that the storage account's in, and this is really important, use Azure AD auth. Uh, if you don't do that, it tries to get the storage account keys and authenticate using that, which is bad. And all of this configuration is common. So I can, logged in as me, I can run Terraform init here. And because I'm logged in with AZ CLI, I did not, that was wrong, sorry. Backend config back, backend.hcl. What that'll do is uh, use my credentials because I'm logged in with AZCLI, talk to a storage account, and I've got there. What we do when we run this in CICD is use this workflows, and all of the CICD specific configuration is in here. So in CICD, we're using a client ID. We're using uh, the snapshot variable. Uh, that's just telling it to, to create a blob snapshot when it, when it does anything. We've got the subscription ID. We've got the tenant ID and the arm use OIDC variable as well. So that's going to use OpenID Connect. We've got some Terraform in automation stuff just to control the backend. So using the combination of this backend.hcl file and these environment variables, we've configured Terraform to use OpenID Connect for talking to the backend storage account, the Azure RM provider, and the AZ API provider. All in, these, all in these few lines here. It's really, really easy. The next thing is a bit of a YOLO uh, pipeline. We just uh, check out the code. We set up Terraform. We run Terraform in it with the backend config file. Uh, and then we run Terraform apply. So let's go and have a look at how that works. If we go back to our repository here, we've configured the credentials. That should be fine. Let's go and have a look at the action. We've got Terraform apply. That's now configured on a workflow dispatch. So Let's kick it off and have a look. OK, that's completed successfully. Let's go and have a look back in the Azure portal at our resource groups. And you can see that we've got a couple of resource groups there. 
That's fantastic. This is literally as easy as that. No shared secrets, authentication into Azure, job done. And it's as easy as that. I hope you found this useful. And next time you're configuring this for yourself, I really hope that you'll perhaps use OpenID Connect instead of using shared secrets or certificates. If you use self-hosted CICD runners, I'm going to do another video with how to configure those to use managed identity. It's largely the same, so it shouldn't be a long one. Just a couple of nuances. But yeah, thank you very much. For those uh, that have watched this far, I really appreciate it. Uh, a like and a subscribe to the channel would be much appreciated. If you want to hang on, I'm going to do a bit of a deeper dive now into OpenID Connect and how it actually works behind the scenes. So do hang on for that. If you've had enough and aren't bothered, then thanks very much again, uh, and hopefully we'll see you next time. Right, so let's go back here. We have got this federated credential, and you'll notice that it's got an issuer. Now that URL is actually really important. If we look at the OpenID specification, you'll see that there's provider configuration request, and that is a well-known URL. So, well, it's something that all OpenID providers have to adhere to if they adhere to the spec. So if we went to oops, the issuer, tokens.actions.githubusercontent.com, put that there, and then we put that after it, we should get some information. There you go. So this is what, this is what Azure is doing when you configure that issuer. This is what it's doing. It's, and the important thing here really is this, which is the, the keys that it uses to sign the certificates. So we can actually go to that URL as well and put that in there, and there you go. So you can see the signing keys, that are the public keys that are used to sign the certificates that Azure processes. So that's how it works behind the scenes. I hope that was a little bit extra. I hope that was a little bit useful um, and perhaps satisfies some of that curiosity as to what the hell is going on here. Um, again, if you have been watching this far, I really appreciate it. Give us a like and subscribe to the channel. It would be much appreciated. I will see you next time.